Hello, I'm Rick Blunt, pastor here at Okemos Community Church. Tonight I'm filming by this mosaic which hangs in our lobby, uh, beautiful, and you can see the tree of life, you can see the, the light of God coming down from heaven, and if you look over here, there is uh, uh, the Okemos Community Church bell tower uh, there as well. I chose this location because I'm going to talk some uh, about the creation story, and in particular, uh, the story that often uh, is labeled the story of original sin. I've often struggled with what I think is um, uh, too much attention that gets paid to that part of the creation story, which comes to us from uh, the second and third chapters of Genesis. You might want to uh, reread that. Um, I, I think sometimes we pay so much attention to that that we overlook or miss the original blessing. It comes in the first chapter of Genesis when God creates humankind in God's own image and calls us very good. And God blesses us from the beginning. But today I want to revisit that Garden of Eden story that's told in chapters 2 and 3. And I want to hopefully recast how we hear that story and how we understand that story. It's a story of the misuse of personal freedom. Last Sunday, I spoke in a, a message called the, the Christian Understanding of Freedom. Uh, and I said, freedom is a gift from God, which enables us to love. In order to love, we have to be free, because love needs to be a choice, not forced. And that to love someone is to put their well-being above our own. Well, here in this second chapter of Genesis, we discover that one of the first uses of this freedom, this free will, is to use it for selfish gain. God had given Adam and Eve all of creation, given them dominion over all of the animals and all of the land and the waters and all of creation. They had everything, everything at their disposal except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everything except one wasn't enough. And the serpent, as you might know the story, uh, tempts uh, Eve and Adam, he was present to, with the promise that if they eat of that fruit, they will be like God. And from the beginning, they are willing to risk their loving relationship with God for the possibility of getting more, more power, more wisdom, of being more like God on an equal status with God here at the very beginning of the Bible. Humankind is tempted to misuse freedom for personal gain instead of trusting in God's love, and instead of believing that God who created us in God's own image, that God who created this amazing, wonderful, beautiful world, pretending or thinking that that God somehow doesn't have our best in mind, that God doesn't uh, desire and will for us what is good and holy and sacred. And that temptation to
to misuse our free will, our freedom for personal gain, it has plagued the world ever since. How much betrayal is the result of decisions to put self above others? How much greed in our world is driven by actions that harm or take advantage of someone else? You could go through the list of wars and conflicts in the Bible and in history and try to figure out who wanted more land or more money or more power or more authority or more subjects underneath him or more praise and more respect in every case we come back to this pattern from the very beginning of using freedom, that God-given gift, using it for our personal gain rather than using it to love, to love others, to love others as we love ourselves, to love others as Christ loves us. We use our freedom to put ourselves in a better spot rather than thinking about the good and the well-being of someone else. Remember, freedom is God's invention. It is a starting point on the journey to love. Freedom is not the end goal. It's a tool. Freedom is to be used to make loving, self-sacrificing decisions to show our love for others by looking to the common good and the betterment of all the world. Freedom allows us to choose to bless someone else. A freedom allows us to be Christ-like, to be like Jesus, to care for others and to put their safety and their well-being above our own. So, are you tired of wearing masks? I am, and I don't have to wear it all day long like some people. Do masks seem harder to tolerate when the weather is this hot? Are you, are you ready to start seeing people face to face? Do you long to shake a hand or offer a hug? Are you sick and tired of social distancing? Certainly. Aren't we all? Many of us thought that this would all be over in a few weeks or a month, rather than going on for four months and surging even now. Science tells us that masks make a difference, that social distancing works, and that washing our hands really helps. Now, you're free to ignore these facts. You and I can claim that we are free, and therefore, we'll do what we want, when we want, where we want, how we want, and for as long as we want. We're free to use and misuse our freedom. Yep, we're descendants of Adam and Eve. And we can, like them, use our freedom for selfish, personal gain. 
but we are also descendants of Jesus Christ. Indeed, uh, Paul in Corinthians uh, describes Jesus as the second Adam or the last Adam, the second man, the, the one who recreates humankind. We are God's children and we bear a resemblance to Christ. We can choose to use our freedom, our free will, to do what is right, what is good, what is holy. To do that which benefits others, even if it's inconvenient, even if we don't want to, it's a sacrifice. We can choose to use our freedom to love. And that was God's intent from the very beginning. And it was evidenced by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it is today empowered by the Holy Spirit. So friends, I encourage you as this pandemic continues to practice love. Do the three W's. Wear your mask. Watch your distance from others. And wash your hands. Wear, watch, wash. It's holy work. It's the way in which we love others, especially the vulnerable in our midst, who are more likely to suffer dramatically and maybe die if they catch this virus. Friends, let us use our freedom wisely to love one another as Christ loves us. Will you pray with me? Oh God, give us strength to love, to choose to love, even when it is hard and difficult and we would rather do something else. Help us learn more and more to put others before self. Help us to use the freedom you give us to do good, to make a difference, to witness to your love and grace. We pray for all of those who are serving in the world to help others, from those who are on the front lines in our hospitals, all of the staff there from housekeepers to surgeons, and nurses and clerical workers, food service people, for those who get the food to our stores and those who serve, serve us in our stores, for those who are doing their jobs and, and caring for children, for those who are struggling to make ends meet, for those who are busy feeding the hungry in our midst. Oh God, be with us. Give us strength. We pray for those around the world who are in need as well. We trust in your love, O oh God. Help us to lean into it so that we might be more and more like you. Amen. Thank you for watching. If this has been helpful, uh, I appreciate it if you would uh, like the post. That helps us get a, a little uh, broader visibility. Email it to a friend or uh, share it on your Facebook page or your YouTube page. Make a comment. That also is a way uh, in which the algorithms work to uh, increase visibility. Maybe take a picture of yourself with your mask on. What does it look like? I, I know my phone has facial recognition, but it doesn't recognize me with my mask on. OCC is still in ministry. 
We invite you to check out our webpage, openmissocc.org, where you find access to our calendar and all of the things that are happening here, especially as we continue to uh, feed local families. You can also check out our Facebook page. You can contact uh, the office and sign up for our email list. If you have a prayer request, you can uh, send it in to Stacy in the office, or you can also ask to receive those prayer requests that are sent out uh, each week. On Sunday, I will have another message for you at 9 a.m. and then at 11.30, uh, we will have a Zoom fellowship time with the staff. On Mondays, I send a, a, an informational Monday message uh, with a little devotion in it that's emailed and posted on uh, Facebook. Tuesday, I'll be uh, in the parking lot from 3 until 4.30, actually more at the picnic table that's in the shade. Uh, even when it was 92 last Tuesday, we had a cool breeze and, uh, and it was nice. It's good to see people face to face. Bring uh, a chair, wear your mask, and uh, bring something uh, to drink. On Wednesdays, uh, there's a music post, and this Wednesday, uh, there will be a live stream hymn sing on Facebook. We invite you to tune in there at 7 p.m. Uh, this coming Wednesday. On Thursday, uh, children and parents can come and pick up the uh, Summer Bible fun packets uh, that will have a treasure hunt with it. Those can also be picked up on Friday. Information is on the website. You'll also receive uh, uh, next week's devotion at 7 p.m. And on two o'clock on Thursdays, I host uh, an informal uh, coffee Zoom, just a time to uh, chat a little bit, grab a pop or a coffee and uh, tune in and you'll find uh, the link to that as well. Thank you for all you're doing. Know that we miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. May you experience and recognize God's blessing in your life this week. Go in peace.